Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. So tonight we're gonna do a pretty simple meal, but we got a lot to talk about. So, a few nights ago we made uh, kielbasas in search of the perfect kielbasa. Is the perfect kielbasa all beef? Is it all pork? Or is it a combination of pork and beef? Well, I'll tell you, it ended up being a split decision. Um, some of us like the pork the most, and that's what we've made for years and years and years. The beef was very good too, and very flavorful. Um, sort of a cross between a kielbasa and a summer sausage in its taste. Well, the one that ended up second place with first place tied between the pork and the beef was the combination pork and beef. So, I got some of those to use up. So as I was doing my research, I came across the Maxwell Street Polish. Now, Maxwell Street is a street in the Chicago area, and it is a street that is very, very rich in history. It's always been an area of immigrants, and for a very, very long time, it was the home of the Maxwell Street Market. Said to be the largest open air market in the entire country, you could get almost anything in there at a very good price. Maybe the, the source of the products that were sold there might have came from railroad cars or maybe semi trucks, maybe in a legal nature, but it was an incredibly popular market. Also, that street has a deep tradition in the blues. Muddy Waters has played there many times. And if you remember back to the great movie, The Blues Brothers, Aretha Franklin's Cafe, where Jake and Elwood ended up during the film, that was on Maxwell Street. So, let's put together this relatively simple recipe, but it is so rich in history. And I think it's gonna be delicious. So first of all, um, we need some onions. We're gonna have some very caramelized onions on this. So I got two onions right here, and you need to chop them up uh, just like this. All right, so we got those ready. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to preheat my oven to 175. Yes, 175 Fahrenheit. It's just gonna be to keep our Polish sausages warm as we do some other activities. Ah. Next, we're gonna take our homemade, but you don't have to use homemade, um, beef pork combination kielbasa, and you don't have to use beef and pork combination. You can uh, substitute. We're doing some substituting here today. You'll see here soon. Um, we're gonna take these and brown them up in a heavy skillet with a little bit of oil. So we're gonna get a medium Heat on that pan, throw in a couple tablespoons of some olive oil, and then we'll brown up our sausages. Once we have them good and browned up and that skin good and crispy, we're going to put them on a baking sheet, chuck them in the oven at 175 degrees to stay warm as we finish up the rest of this masterpiece. All right, so we've been browning up our sausages about five minutes on each side. Now it's time to get those out of that skillet. Chuck those in the oven to stay warm for us. Now we're gonna go grab these onions that we so meticulously cut and chuck those in the skillet. Gonna get those good and mixed with the oil and the juices from the sausages. Then we're gonna hit them with a good pinch of salt and pepper. And now we're gonna leave these alone for about 10 minutes to do their magic. All right, before I mention substitutions, and one of the big ones we're gonna have to do is a Chicago hot dog or a Maxwell Street Polish are both served on a poppy seed hot dog bun. Sadly, here in the Valley of the Sun, I searched and I searched and I searched. And unless I wanted 48 of these via Amazon, I could not find a decent small amount of poppy seed hot dog buns. So, I have here these egg hot dog buns. I've cut them down the center. 
We're gonna hit those real quick with a little bit of avocado oil. Why? Because it's a very neutral oil. There's no taste to it. Get that spread out on them all. And then we're gonna sprinkle some poppy seeds on it. And all over the goddamn place. Boy, those little bastards go everywhere. So my first thought was to hit them with that oil, get the poppy seeds on them, and then chuck them in the oven for a little bit to sort of bake those on. But one of the hallmarks of a Maxwell Street Polish is a soft, steamed bun. So I really didn't want to get it crisp at all. That's why we did it this way. As we're waiting on the long stretch of this, uh, which is the onions, let's, let's talk about another ingredient that goes on a Maxwell Street Polish, as well as a Chicago hot dog. And those are sport peppers. So if you're like me and not from the Chicago area, you'd say to yourself, self, what the hell is a sports pepper? Well, it's interesting. Sort of a mystery, basically. Uh, basically grown in the southern US, uh, sports peppers are um, green, they are never longer than an inch and a half. They are pickled. So heat wise, they can be as hot as two or three times the heat of a jalapeno. So if you're worried about heat, make sure you're looking close whether you're getting mild or hot sports peppers because hot sports peppers can be damn hot. Now, once they're pickled, they gain their uh, they're coloring a basically a pepperoncini, but they're not pepperoncinis. A lot of people think they are. Some people think they might be serranos, but uh, there are a bunch of different type of peppers that are used to make sports peppers. And it can be serranos um, as long as they don't go any longer than an inch and a half. I don't make up these rules. And I know Wikipedia would not lie to us. No, 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 no. no. So, Another thought you should have in your head is if you have some people that aren't real savvy on spices, which Charlotte is not, a great substitution for it would be some mild pepperoncinis. So I also got some of those for her dog. All right, it's time to put this iconic over 100 year old recipe together. So first we're going to spread our buns and we're gonna hit it with some yellow mustard. I'm using Coleman's because I want this to be incredible. Next goes the sausage. And then our caramelized onions. A couple sports peppers now go on for Greg and I. Two or three, and that's about all you can fit on there. And then, because I don't want to get killed, for Charlotte, we're going to put some pepperoncinis on there. Now the last but important step. Now, we're going to take each one of them and wrap them in some parchment paper and let them sit for about five minutes so the heat from the sausage and those onions can steam our buns. And we're gonna let those set for about five minutes. As poppy seeds and pepperoncinis go flying everywhere. As those buns are steaming, if you're liking what you're seeing, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Get to see every one of our episodes. Hit the bell, get notified when we put out a new one. Typically Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at three o'clock on the West Coast, six o'clock on the East Coast. Mm. All right, steaming time is done. Let's give this a try. All right, make sure we get a bite of onions, a bite of that sports pepper. All right, fantastic. The way those onions and the peppers go together with the yellow onions that we caramelized, fantastic. As I said, really simple recipe, but very historic, very old, and fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, and until next time.
Fairwinds and following seas.